Hallelujah. Glory be to the Lord. We want to appreciate the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for giving us grace to be here today, Tuesday, to fellowship together. We want to welcome all our viewers. Please tag on someone so that we can minister together for the glory of God. We are here in Chinawataka, Nakawa Division in Kampala, Uganda. You are most welcome. Let's pray so that we can minister for today. Almighty God, King of Kings, Lord of Lords, Creator of the Universe, we worship you, we bow down before you, we glorify your name, our God, Abba Father, Lord of Lords, Negus Negusta, we glorify your name forever. Forgive our sins that we have committed against you, Lord Jesus. And give us grace to serve you. King of glory, let your word be honored forever. Come and give us insight to your word. Speak to us. Speak to the world. Let your word go to the world according to your will. Interfering spirits, principalities, authorities be broken. Powers of darkness interfering with the children of God be broken. King of glory, minister unto us today in Jesus' name we pray. We are going to talk about the events in the world and in particular the events which are signs to the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And in particular today we are going to look at the role of a believer to understand, to internalize the wars and rumors of wars that surround the end times. Wars and rumors of wars. We shall get understanding of what we are going to share from the scripture. In the book of Matthew, chapter 24, when the disciples asked Jesus that he tell us when will the things be? What will be the sign of your coming? Jesus diligently told them to be careful. Which message is related to the church of today to be careful to have ability the church should have insight the church should have the spirit of discernment to look at the circumstances that are written in the Bible that must happen the scripture says they must happen before the coming of the Lord. Of course, we are aware that devil worshippers do not want to give credit to the word of God. So they come up with a lot of names, naming situations in a way that even believers can be carried away. But Jesus told the disciples, he says in verse 2, See ye not all the things he was responding to the question he was asked. Verily I say unto you, there shall not be left here one stone upon another that it shall not be thrown down. Jesus here was speaking about the temple of Jerusalem. Which temple was destroyed? And it was destroyed by the Arabs. And they took over, they took over the temple area and constructed the Dome of the Rock and the so-called Alaska Mosque. Even as we speak today, 
That place where the temple was placed has been occupied by Islam. But remember in the scripture, before Jesus comes back, the Antichrist is going to rule. Remember in the scripture, of course we have uh, different beliefs. There are those who believe that they will be raptured before the Antichrist. But you will be shocked when the Antichrist is raised when you are still around. And you will be eaten by shock. What we are saying is the place of the temple has been taken. But the Antichrist is supposed to come and rule in the temple. Now, before the temple is constructed, there is going to be war. That is why we are saying that watch out for the rumors of wars and wars and alliances that are created in the world today. Watch out, be diligent, understand situations as we prepare for the rapture. So Jesus says in verse 4 that let no man deceive you. He says, be careful, take heed. Be careful that nobody shall deceive you. There will be a lot of deception. There is a lot of deception. And the deception is going to increase. In verse 6, he says, And you shall hear of the wars and rumors of wars. See that you be troubled. See that you be not troubled. For all the things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. Says, you are going to hear wars and rumors of wars. As we speak, the world that we are living in is on tension. Tension. On the tension of pandemics. Tension of wars, wars in the Middle East, Hamas killing 1,400 Jews, wars in Jordan with the Jews, wars everywhere in Ukraine, in Africa, coups. The Bible says you are going to hear about wars and rumors of wars. And when you hear about the things, don't take them for granted. As a believer and a servant of God, be wise. Understand the times that we are in. He says, for all the things must come to the end is not yet. So the end will not just come because of the wars and rumors of wars. The wars and rumors of the wars shall lead us to the end. For the nation shall rise against the nation and the kingdom and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. There shall be famines earthquakes this very year alone we have a lot of earthquakes everywhere don't watch them like nine believers do who have no understanding of the word of God so whatever we do we should be doing knowing that the times that we are living in are limited Whatever you want to invest on, 
whatever you want to do on earth, know that the time is limited. For nations shall rise against nations, pestilences, pestilences. We have reached to the level that people do not care about humanity. People go into laboratories and make viruses that can kill millions and millions of people. And these are people who have been entrusted, custody of human life. These are governments, these are NGOs, these are authorities. But Jesus says all this must happen. Earthquakes. He says all these are the beginnings of sorrows. These are beginnings of sorrows. Sorrows are coming. Who's going to be sorrowful? These are beginnings of sorrows, but this sorrow is for who? When you hear of wars and rumors of wars, these are beginnings of sorrow. Sorrow is coming to the world. Sorrow where you work, your property is taken. Sorrows where believers will be arraigned in the courts. As we speak in the world today, being a believer or a Christian is becoming a crime. But when you look at people who are doing terrorism, there are a lot of rallies supporting them. That they are asking for freedoms. Freedoms for homosexuals. Freedoms for animals. There is no freedom for Christians. But animals have more freedoms. So the scripture says, watch, be careful. When you hear the things coming, prepare, sorrow is coming. These are signs that sorrow will come. And says in verse 10, 9, then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted. So these sorrows that the Bible is talking about are sorrows of affliction. And it shall kill you. And you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Being called by the name of Jesus calls for hatred. I was even seeing even just in Israel. Some members of the current government were trying to bring up legislation to deny the preaching of Jesus Christ in Israel. Yet there are minority Christians there. Look at how they massacre Christians in China. Look at how they massacre Christians in Afghanistan. No one wants to talk about it. Even India, they are persecuting Christians. Look at the world where you are in today. The Bible says these are beginnings of sorrow. So sorrow is coming. Even preaching like this is going to become criminal. Whereas homosexuals have rights. Everyone has rights of perversion. But for you, you cannot have a right over your faith. Everyone respects Islam. But to be a Christian is a criminality. Jesus says, be careful. As long as you are called by my name, you are going to face sorrow. Now, these Christians who think that coming to salvation is all about enjoying life, getting visas, traveling nations, buying private jets. Jesus says sorrow is coming. 
the early church, the church of Peter, who would celebrate the death, people who die in Christ, the saints. But the church of today, we are celebrating birthdays. We are celebrating Halloween, festivals of demons. But the Christians of the old, they would celebrate dying in Christ. They saw it as a sacrifice. The Christians of today are told, which is not bad, that they have to get visas. They have to receive private jets from God. But I tell you, Jesus warns the church, take heed that evil is going to be called good as it is already done. And good evil. Men shall hate you for doing good. The whole society shall be with you just because you go to church. Sorcerers have risen everywhere. The church slept. And Jesus says when men slept, the evil one saw tears. There are tears in the parliaments, tears in the governments, tears everywhere. Christians have no space. The next item is sorrow. So Jesus warns the church. He says, take heed that you will be deceived. He says, and then shall many be offended and shall betray one another. They shall hate one another. There is going to be betrayal and hatred for one another. Let me tell you the truth. Even as we speak now, the world is governed by hypocrites. The ones who say that they are protecting human rights. And everyone is abducting children. Sacrificing children. Sacri the ones who claim to be protecting women's rights. And they are the abusers of human rights. And now, what does it mean for these laws that you see in existence? These laws that you see shall be used for tormenting believers. They were used for creating wars because their God is in the blood. These are blood suckers. They are looking for blood everywhere. Jesus says, take heed that you not be troubled. Mark, Mark captured the same thing when Jesus spoke. He says in verse 7 of chapter 13, and when you shall hear of the wars and the rumors of the wars. Be not troubled. Do not be disturbed. For such things must needs be. But the end shall not be yet. For a nation shall rise against a nation and a kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be earthquakes in diverse places, and there shall be famines and troubles. These are the beginnings of sorrows. But take heed to yourselves, for they shall deliver you up to councils. And in the synagogues, ye shall be beaten, and you shall be brought before rulers and kings, for my sake, for the testimony against me. And the gospel must first be published among the nations. 
But when they shall lead you and deliver you up, taking no thought beforehand what you shall speak, neither do you premeditate, but you, but whatsoever shall be given to you in that hour, that speak ye, for it, for it is not you that speak, but the Holy Ghost. Jesus is saying to the church, the church at this moment must be a church which is in spirit. A church, a believer who is able to discern the situations. Filled by the Spirit of God. You cannot survive by your pastor. We have a generation of believers who cannot pray for themselves. But Jesus says, when these difficult times come, it will be you and the Holy Ghost. Not you and your bishop. Not you and your pastor. Not you and your wife. Not you and your children. Because in the times of war, you may not know where your children will run to. Your children in Uganda may run to Tanzania and you run to South Sudan. Your pastor might be hiding in the Congo. And the apostle will be hiding in Kenya. It will be you and the Holy Spirit. It is a high time you find yourself in the presence of the Holy Spirit. Learn the word of God for yourself. For it will be you if you have no Holy Spirit. You will be deceived. It is a time for men to get ready. And the scripture is saying, by you getting ready, he should move closer to the Holy Spirit. That you may allow the Holy Spirit to lead you in what you do here. It is good whatever you want to do. Wherever you want to go. But it will be you and the Holy Spirit. In the times of difficulty. When you are reigned in the castle. When you are taken to courts. When you are afflicted. When you are beaten. When you are being shot. It is you and the Holy Spirit. Wars and rumors of wars. Should draw the church closer to Christ. Not sensationalism. Not a church that does not understand what is happening in the world. It is you. The word warns the church. In Revelation chapter 6. Let's start from verse 1. And I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals and I heard as it were the noise of a thunder. One of the, one of the four beasts said, come and see. And I saw and behold a white horse and he that sat on him had a bow. And a crown was given unto him. And he went forth conquering and to conquer. And when he had opened the second seal, I heard a second beast say, Come and see. And there went out another horse that was red 
and the power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from earth. And, they, and that they should kill one another. And given unto him a great sword. And when he had opened the third seal, I heard the third beast say, Come and see, and behold, I look, and look, a black house, and he that sat had a pair of balances in his hand. And I heard a voice in the midst of, of the voice say, a measure of wheat for a penny and three measures of barley for a penny and see thou hast not the oil and the wine and when he had opened the fourth seal I heard the voice of the fourth beast saying come and see and I looked and behold a pale horse and his name that sat on him was death and hell followed with him and the power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with the sword and with the hunger and with the death and with the peace of the earth And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. The souls of believers. John saw in the revelation the souls of believers who were slaughtered. These are believers slaughtered not gods now when you hear about this get ready these things must happen if it is not yet their time we can pray and it will be distressed but they must happen before the coming of the Lord He says he saw a pale horse and the rider was death. Now, you have seen the ministry of celebrities. You have seen the ministry of homosexuality. How governments are dying for this spirit. It is a spirit of the Antichrist. They are willing for anybody to die as long as the rights of homosexuals are protected. All this must happen. The Bible says it is you and the Holy Spirit. So salvation at this moment is a personal matter. It will not be you and your tribesmen. Not your father. Not your mother, not your husband. It is you and Christ. Salvation must be personalized. Watch out as a church. We should watch out what happens in Israel. It is prophetic. Israel as a nation is a prophetic nation. Some of the major events that will lead to the end of the world must happen in Israel. So whatever happens in Israel, be conscious as a child of God. Don't listen like anything else, any other story. It has prophetic implications. Let's look at Luke. 
chapter 21. This was Jesus warning the church of God. Let's start from verse 19. He says, in your patience, possess ye your soul. In all of these things, you need two things. You need patience, which is called perseverance or endurance. You must have endurance. If they put a sword on your throat to cut you, can you persevere? If they beat you, can you persevere? If they shoot your son and they ask you whether you're a believer, can you persevere? Can you die for Christ? He says, possess your soul. Do not let your soul to be taken away. You must possess your soul. Own your soul. Take care of your soul. He says, and when you shall see Jerusalem compassed with the armies, then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. When you see armies fighting around Jerusalem, struggling for Jerusalem, you know, the whole world wants to own Jerusalem. The Arabs claim it is their third holiest site where Muhammad ascended to heaven. Those are the Arabs. Whether it is true or not, this must happen. Now, look at the Russians. They were giving the government of Israel pressure that they have their sites there which they need to protect. The Christians are also saying Jerusalem. The Jews. Now, the Jesus says you are going to see armies surrounding Jerusalem. When everyone wants to fight for Jerusalem, the Palestinians are saying, it's our land, we were chased. The Jews are saying, we are the ones who were chased. The Christians are saying, we also need it share. The world is fighting around Jerusalem. Because there is a covenant in Jerusalem that God did with the patriarchs. That Jerusalem shall be an eternal city. The devil is scampering for that covenant. That is why we said that the temple was destroyed. But another temple must be built. That temple cannot be built. It cannot be built. There must be a serious war that will destroy that mosque there. The Alaska Mosque and the Dome of the Rock. For the Jews to put up another temple. So Jesus wants us here. He says, when you see armies surrounding Jerusalem, and in order the desolation there of his night. The desolation was what was spoken by Prophet Daniel. A man who comes to sit in the temple and he declares himself Christ. But now there is no temple. So this wars must first take place before the temple is built. So we must pay attention to Jerusalem as a church. He says that the time 
they will be fleeing. Some people will run to the mountains. It says all these things must be. It says in verse 22. For these things, for this be the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. These things must be fulfilled. It will be things of vengeance. Now you can see. Israel has to respond to the killing of the Jews. By this Hamas terrorist. It will be days of vengeance. This one wants revenge. The other one wants revenge. So this nation will want to revenge. Another one revenge. So we must pay attention to Jerusalem. So this desolation that the Lord spoke about was first seen by Daniel. Before we read Daniel, let's remind ourselves the prophets of Ezekiel. Chapter 38. Let's read briefly a few verses. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face against Gog, the land of Magog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tuba, and prophesy against him. And say that, says the Lord God, Behold, I am against thee, O Gog, chief prince of Meshach and Tuba. And I will turn thee back and put hooks into thy jaws. And I will bring thee forth and all thine army horses and horsemen, all of them close with all sorts of armor, even a great company with bucklers and shields, all of them handling swords, passing. You know, the scripture is talking about ancient names here. These nations that Ezekiel saw are going to rise against Israel. The scripture is talking about Persia. Ethiopia, Libya. Persia is the current day run. You can see how Iran is obsessed with wiping away Israel. That Israel should not be in existence. The scripture is also talking about the northern countries, which we suspect to be Russia. All these armies shall come together against Israel. And these alliances are almost drawn up. Russia, Turkey, Iran, and these other Arabs. The, the Hamas and the Hezbollah says all of them will shields and element and all bands the house of Goma of the north quarters and all his bands and many people with thee he says be thou prepared and prepare for thyself, thou and all my company and thy company that are assembled unto thee, and be thou God unto them. 
after many days thou shalt be visited of course all these people shall come against Israel they are going to surround Israel I want to say, tell you the truth as we speak now there are more countries that support Palestine than Israel and the demonstrations that support Palestine they are more than Israel. If we ask a question, the Arabs conquered Israel and took over the land. The Jews came back and possessed a little land. Everyone is clamoring that they, they are mistreating the, the Palestines. It is because it is written in the scripture. Nations shall gather together, including Sudan. To fight Israel. They will come that to teach Israel a lesson. But when you understand the scriptures, even in Ezekiel 39, the Lord speaking about Gog and Magog, Israel shall be victorious not because of their power, because they have also refused God. But God, because of the covenant, he had with their fathers will remember them and save Israel from these nations. And this shall lead the building of the another temple which Daniel saw. Which Daniel saw in a vision. We can just read verse 31 in Daniel chapter 11. And the arms shall stand on his path, and they shall pollute the sanctuary of strength, and shall take away the daily sacrifice. And they shall place the abomination that makes desolate. This is what Jesus said, that you are going to see the abomination that causes desolate. And such as do wickedly against the covenant, shall he corrupt by flatteries. Daniel saw the Antichrist. These wars are going to lead to the rise of the Antichrist. The Antichrist shall sit in the temple and defile it and suspend the daily sacrifice. And do wickedness with the flatteries. Of course, you will come with deception. When you understand the scriptures, the Antichrist will rule for seven years. He will rise with the deception. Which Paul also, Paul also. We shall come back to this scripture. Let's first go to what Paul. Let's see here. In the book of Thessalonians, chapter 5, can read verse 1 through 3. But of the times and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as it travel upon a woman with a child, and they shall not escape. The word of the Lord here that Paul saw 
These wars are going to rise. They will be fighting everywhere. Then the Antichrist will rise. That is a man of peace. He has brought peace. And it will be plastic peace. He will sign agreements with the nations. And the Bible says here that there will be sudden destruction. The first three and a half years will be mild. The Antichrist is going to rise with the deception that Daniel saw. Daniel said with the flattery, with the deception, with the cunning, with a sweet mouth full of deadly poison that is bringing peace to the world. Plastic peace. After sending power. Now, Paul says here in the verse 4, but you, brethren, are not in darkness that that day should overtake you as a thief. You are not in the darkness. Unfortunately, the church is also in darkness. Let's go back to Daniel. Daniel, revealing the word before his time was finished here on earth. That the Lord had showed him through an angel. He says, Daniel is describing what the Antichrist is going to do. And such as, in verse 32, and such as do wickedly against the covenant, shall he corrupt by flatteries. He will come and do covenants with the flatteries. Then he will break it. And he shall be strong and do exploits. And they that understand among other people shall instruct many. Yet they shall fall by the sword and by flame. You saw how even before this Antichrist comes, you know, these terrorists are, going, are just revealing to us what the Antichrist is supposed to do. So how they are burning children alive. These terrorists burning children, raping women. And people are supporting them. Governments are supporting them. These are just manifestations, symptoms of what the Antichrist is going to do. People will be banned. People will be taken to captivity. And by spoil, many days. Now when they shall fall, they shall be helped with a little help. But many shall cleave to them with flatteries. They will help them with a little help. They will come like they want to help. Just a little help. They will come with food while the food program. They will come with tents for shelter. Whereas they are gods in the blood. These are blood suckers. The child of God. Be you awake. Stop sleeping. Don't be in the darkness. Don't be in the darkness. The works of darkness. Sexual immorality, adultery. Paul says, when you are in the darkness, you will be overtaken by events. 
Don't be in the darkness. Stop living in the darkness. Stop the works of darkness. These are not the days of being in the darkness. That is when the spirit will give you insight of what is happening. If you be in darkness, you will be chained by the devil. It is a shame that you have lived all your lifetime in a church, then you will enter in hell. We blame you. Don't be in the darkness. These are days men should repent of their sins and be enclaved to the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit will guide them on what to do. For the scripture says, walk in the spirit. So you will not fulfill the desires of the flesh. The scripture says, the Holy Spirit marks his people. And he puts a seal to guarantee the inheritance of eternal life. You should be aware that as we speak, portals that lead to a base have been opened. So we have in our existence here on earth demons in the proportions never seen before the world was created. That is why people are becoming drunk daily. They are bloody thirsty. For the times are ripe. So the word says, do not live in the darkness. Stop the works of darkness. When Jesus came, He emphatically said that whoever believes in him shall be saved. Unfortunately, in verse 20, chapter 3 of John, said, let me start from 19. And this is the condemnation that the light is coming to the world. And the men love the darkness rather than the light because their deeds were evil. Everyone that does evil hates the light. Neither cometh to the light. Least his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light that his deeds may be made manifest that they may that they are wrought in God. Men of God, children of God, church of God, repent for the Son of God is coming. If we don't repent now, we may not have another chance. Because some will die by the sword. Some will die by the floods. You know, because the scripture spoke about floods. The scripture spoke about earthquakes. Now devil worshippers are calling it global warming. To confuse those who read the word of God. Calling the global world. And they are working hard that they can prevent, that they can do something. That the green energy. Even tomorrow they will come with the black energy.
The Bible is very clear. These are signs of sorrow to come. Famine, pestilences, earthquakes, disease. It says, watch. The church needs to be pure. The church has to repent. It is your salvation that will save you. It is between you and the Holy Spirit. It is not a communal matter. It is not a matter of UN. It is not a matter of governments. It is you individually. And your maker. Make it with your maker that you will be saved. But if you live in the darkness, I tell you the truth. Sin is deceptive. Sin is a form of prison. When you commit, it is difficult to come out of it unless your consciousness stays clear to allow the spirit to help you to break it. You live alone these devil worshippers who teach people once saved, forever saved. There is no provision for adulterers in heaven. Repent that you may save yourself. This one is for you to save yourself. It is for you to deliver yourself. Hell is coming. Thank you for listening. We may stop there for today. God bless you all. Let's pray. Almighty God, King of kings, Lord of lords, creator of the universe, prepare the church. Send the Holy Spirit to help the church. Commission the angels to help the church. Powers of darkness that follow the word of God to adulterate be broken. Be bound to a base and never to return. Father, we come all the viewers with the blood of Jesus. We come everyone who watches this program with the blood of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.